Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jeff Bailey. We got a pretty cool video here uh, this week. Cool knife that uh, I'm uh, especially pleased to be able to show you. First time ever we're taking a look at a knife for a viewer. Uh, Matthew Perry sent this knife in at my request because I thought it would be really cool to take a look at. Uh, we're looking at a Viper today. So this is his his tube. This is the just recently came out brown snakeskin acrylic. So we're looking at this knife today out here on the, the hood of my truck because I wanted to eke the last little bit of sunlight in. I want to get this back in the mail to, to Matthew uh, as soon as possible. Um, so this is the 47. So we've seen the 47s, but this is the snakeskin acrylic. Is that cool or what? a little bit of a closer look here. This video is going to kind of come to us from the graces of uh, two of our listeners, or our viewers. So Matthew sent the knife in, and how about the truth, uh, in one of my other videos, posted some really interesting insight into why these 47s came out so later, so much later than all their brethren. Um, let's see if I can, I can reference here maybe while we, while we look here. So according to some inside information, uh, his words not mine, that he that he got is that the handle material was a one-off uh, from maybe a manufacturer in Germany. And uh, I guess Bill Howard at GEC got enough to make these Vipers. There was some kind of hang up in the shipping or the availability and uh, didn't let him finish the run. So. That's why they didn't come out until later, but he did eventually get the handle material here, so this very well could be a completely one-off. And what better, uh, what better platform to do it on than the than the Viper 47 Viper Tidyut version? So we've got the hot dog shield here, um, nail nick pull, got the swedge and stuff. And I offer to uh, to Matthew for him to let me take a look at this knife. Uh, extremely generous on his behalf to do so um, that I would try to give it a touch-up sharpening. You know, GEC has been getting better I think in their factory sharpenings but it certainly is not a uh, is not something that probably wows anybody so I went ahead and took a round at it with my Edge Pro and it probably is not mirror, mirror sharp, but pretty darn close edge here. You can get a focus. And you can see, got it pretty good here. Pretty good. Made me realize I need to get mine back out. Yep, Grayson Cutlery, Titusville Ironworks, made in the USA. I think the tree frogs are going to start up here. I know now I've we've got a knife channel that we've managed to go quite a few videos without having <laughs> me cutting any paper. But today we're going to do that. I just have like a receipt here, some thin, you know, thin paper, just to try to show here. Hopefully it'll cooperate with me. Just, just like it's not even there. You can cut quickly. Slowly. It's catching a little bit. It doesn't help that this is wrinkly. It's been sitting in the garage too, so it's probably a little bit a little moist. Pretty good. I'm not the world's greatest sharpener, but uh, I think this might hopefully serve Matthew. Make him feel like he didn't waste his time sending his knife to me. This is very thin paper. It's all, It's always hard to Hard to do this really well with this thin paper. 
I look at the camera and not cut my fingers off here. Alright, you guys get the idea. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good job here. I could take me this barcode here. So if we can see the, uh, the reflection there on the, the bevel. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. It'll definitely, uh, definitely trim some hairs here. So, nice and sharp. Hope that Matthew enjoys. I'm sure he doesn't want any of my arm here going back to him to te back with his knife to Texas. But how about that, huh? Snakeskin acrylic. Presumed to be an exclusive handle material just to this run. Very special. They really did a great job at uh, getting that look. I wonder how they do that, how they manufacture their different acrylics. Or I guess they don't. Like this one was um, sorry, just trying to wait for my camera to focus up on us again. Here we go. Since this one was purchased, I try to really chicken eye this uh, chicken eye and coon finger. Look it up on Blade Forums. This material here. Really interesting patterning. I wanted to do this shoot outside today because it really just sings much more than natural sunlight, I thought. Some of them are a lot more regular in pattern. He's got a really cool one where you've got these small scales and I'll call them scales. Of course, it's just the patterning, but small scales, larger scales, got this cool kind of swirl here of scales. Very nice knife. Anyway. Thank you very much, Matthew, for providing this knife. If any of you guys have an interesting knife and uh, want uh, your blade touched up, um, get in touch with me. L let me know in the comments. I'd love to maybe do a couple more of these. Uh, user submitted knives, viewer submitted knives, and uh, give us uh, some more cool stuff to take a look at. But once again, thank you, Matthew, so much. I'm going to try to get this back into you, back to you in the mail tomorrow, and. Uh, Later this week, we'll take a look at a couple new Whittlers that I uh, convinced myself that I needed over the weekend. Well, actually late last week. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, if you have anything to say about this, you can tell me how bad my, uh, my sharpening skills are. That's fine. Uh, hopefully I can get better. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.